What if I was to tell you there was a quaint little Swiss village deep in the woods, deep in the hill somewhere? This village is so isolated and so rural that cell phones don't always work, GPS can't even always get you there. Yes, there is a place where even telemarketers can't reach you to talk to you about your car's extended warranty. And every year, this quaint little Swiss village has a massive celebration where people come from all over to eat amazing food, play music, socialize, and the night ends with a giant bonfire and dance in the town hall. Sounds pretty amazing, right? Now, what if I told you that this town and celebration doesn't happen in Switzerland? No, no, no. It actually happens in a village in West Virginia. Yeah. Yeah, this is going to be a Havasha and Foshnot survival guide. This is going to be a good one. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? I'm the best Virginian. I bring you West Virginia history and travel videos from across the mountain state. And today we are going to be talking about Havasha, West Virginia and Foshnot 2023. Now I know what you're thinking, best Virginian, you've done several videos on Havasha and Foshnot. Yeah, I've probably done about four or five over the years, but this one is going to be more of a survival guide, very much like I did with 2022's Mothman Festival in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. It's basically just going to be an overview of what to expect and how to prepare if you ever decide to come to Havasha, either for Foshnot or one of the other festivals, or you just want to visit for a day. This is kind of the rules that I would suggest living by when you visit the area. Nothing too crazy here. Uh, just remember there is almost no cell service. You need to bring some cash with you. Wear plenty of layers. Bring everything you need, not just for the day, but to get back out. And the fifth one, well, you're gonna have to wait around to the end of the video to learn that one. And if this is the type of video, if this is the type of content that you are interested in, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you never miss an update and it really helps out the channel and really helps me grow along with liking and sharing and all that other good stuff. So the story of Havasia, West Virginia starts in 1869. At the end of the American Civil War, a bunch of German and Swiss immigrants who were living in New York at the time decided they would eventually all move to a similar region in the United States. Eventually, they found an area right outside Clarksburg According to all reports, it's actually more like an hour, hour and a half outside Clarksburg, kind of out in the middle of nowhere, where they found a very large track of land that was exceedingly cheap, mostly due to how isolated and underdeveloped it was, and decided that's a place, that's where we're going to move. By 1874, the village had a population of over 300 people. I think it was right around 308, which considering they were European, is about seven, six, two people. If you get that joke, we're probably gonna be friends. Unfortunately today, the town only has a population of about 60, really it's right under 60, but their customs, their food, and their celebrations continue on, and the most popular of these is by far Foshnot. Now, Foshna is basically Swiss Carnival or Swiss Mardi Gras. It's a pre-Lent celebration prior to the Easter season. How do they prepare for the Easter season? How do they prepare for this particularly holy time of year? With debauchery, of course, like super fatty foods, especially fried donuts, which are called Foshnots. I see what you did there. Music, dancing, a bonfire, and the burning of an effigy of Old Man Winter. But there's some things you should know about Havasia and Foshnot uh, before you ever travel there. For example, first off, Havasia is on the edge of the National Radio Quiet Zone. A lot of people know about Green Bank, West Virginia, the town where there is pretty much no cell phone service, but that's not just a town. That is an entire geographical region that makes up parts of West Virginia and Virginia, and Havasia is within that zone. So cell phone service is very limited. Cell phone internet access, 
yeah, pretty much non-existent. So just prepare for that before you ever go there. I personally love it because people have to socialize with each other. People kind of have to live in the moment and take part in these celebrations. They can't just sit there and just scroll through their phone all day. They kind of have to interact with the people around them, which might be super uncomfortable for some people. I personally love it. Now, this is why you should 100% either print out directions or bring a map or bring someone who knows how to get you there and back home. Uh, GPS can even be somewhat unreliable. I've heard stories of people being sent down like one lane uh, dirt roads <laughs> trying to get to Avasia. In one case, I heard a story where someone, their GPS told them, hey, up ahead, you're gonna wanna turn right and then continue down a one lane road. Yeah, the one lane road was actually just a stream and GPS was like, no, no, trap, drive down the stream, get in there. And in one case, and before I talk about it, I want this person to know that I appreciate the crap out of them and love the fact that they watch the majority of my videos, which is why they're probably going to see this. I'm not targeting you, I'm just sharing your story. They had been to Havasia before. In fact, they had been there the night before, less than 12 hours before they almost got lost trying to get back to Havasia. They had been there. They were traveling back there the morning after Foshnot to spend a little bit more time with some of their friends, decided to follow GPS's directions, and almost got lost. Again, I appreciate the crap out of you. I love the fact that you watch my videos, but a lot of people can learn from that experience, and that's kind of what you do for a living. So, but yeah, basically my first tip for uh, if you're going to visit Havasia or, you know, come to town for Foshna or one of their many other festivals like the Feast of St. Nicholas, bring a map, learn some basic lane navigation skills. There's absolutely no reason you'll regret having those basic skills. Also, the fact I didn't spend all day staring at a screen, by the time I made it back home that night, I'm like, wow, I'm really tired. I, I should probably start getting ready to head to bed. I looked at the clock and it was like 9.30 at night, like 9.30, maybe 10.30, and I'm like, you know what, screw it, like I'm going to bed, I'm going to get a full 12 hours of sleep, I don't care. So yeah, there's a lot of benefits to you know, cell, cellular devices not really working down there. Now, the second rule I have, if you're going to visit Havasia, if you're going to come into town for any of their festivals and events is bring cash. Uh, the lack of internet access can make it very hard to do digital transactions. And at an event where you're going to be spending a good portion of your day either eating or standing in line to buy food, it just makes everything easier for the vendors. It keeps the lines moving and it gets food into your belly even quicker, which let's be honest, that's why you're there. You're there for the brats. You're there for the sauerkraut. You're there for the donuts. Yeah, just bring cash. It makes everything easier. And it's really amazing to see. I know last summer when we were there, uh, one of the buildings, the Honey House, was actually kind of starting to collapse in on itself. And no doubt, due to the money that's coming in from different festivals like this, from different events like this, they've really invested it back into the town. Not just is the roof kind of rebuilt, but the building itself looks like it's in much better condition. And it's great to see the town reinvesting in on itself and really bringing life back to a lot of these iconic structures and buildings within the community. So bring cash, like a lot of cash, like bunch of cash. Like I said earlier in the video, uh, this is a spring celebration where the highlight is a parade through town and a burning of an effigy of Old Man Winter, hopefully to make spring come even sooner. It's probably one of the only times where you can leave and tell your friends, yeah, over the weekend I saw an old guy burn to death, and that's a perfectly acceptable sentence to say. Because a lot of time is spent outdoors, 
in February in the mountains of West Virginia, you should wear lots of layers. If you don't bundle up enough, if you don't wear enough layers, uh, you'll be cold and miserable when the sun goes down or if you find yourself in the shade or if a stiff breeze starts blowing. And you can always take off layers. I should probably rephrase that. You can take off a reasonable amount of layers before people eventually call the cops. But seriously, when the bonfire was over and we headed into the community hall for the dance, they have this big uh, hall dance with traditional dancing, traditional music. The temperature change was so great that my camera completely fogged over for a good 10, 15 minutes. And as more and more people packed into the hall, as more and more people started dancing and celebrating, the clothes started coming off um, because it heated up very, very quickly. Warmed up. I don't know why I said heated up. That, that makes it sound so much worse. In fact, the dancing was so intense, the entire building was shaking and the tables in the basement of the building are built around the support beams of the building. Even they were bouncing up and down because the dancing upstairs was so intense. Like this was a surreal experience and the locals, the people who live there and have been celebrating Foshnot their entire lives were like, yeah, no, nah, that's a thing that happens. This is, this building's over a hundred years old. It will be fine. It should also be noted that Havasha is pretty isolated. Uh, me personally, it takes me about an hour and a half, closer two hours to get up there. And the nearest bustling metropolises are cities like Weston, Buchanan, and Elkins. <laughs> Um, yeah, th those are also relatively like smaller towns, but they're the closest thing uh, to towns around Havasia. I mean, comparatively speaking, yeah, they kind of are bustling metropolises. For this reason, you should bring everything you'll need throughout the day in, in order to get back out of town with you when you come into town. Me personally, I brought some camping chairs, some snacks, some drinks, and some other goodies that I kind of use throughout the day. Also, Havasia is a good solid half an hour from the closest gas station, so prepare for that accordingly as well. This rule also applies to designated drivers since yeah, drinking is a pretty important part of the celebration. Also due to parking being at a premium, uh, first come surf, first serve basis, carpooling is a really great idea anyways, because if you're going to get lost in the woods, you might as well do it with friends. Get lost in the woods, that is. Havasia is a one-of-a-kind village that takes great pride in its history and customs and has become really a place of pilgrimage for not just West Virginians, but especially the Fallout community. It was awesome seeing so many members of the Fallout community, many I had never met before and probably never would have met if it wouldn't have been for this unique little village. Which brings me to my last point in this video. How many places like this still exist in the world? A place where you can go and live in the moment, just enjoy the great food, the great people, the atmosphere. A place where time kind of stands still and all the worries of the outside world just get put on hold. Seriously, no lie, at one point I was just sitting there enjoying being out in the sun and I took like a 30 minute nap. Like someone came and like started talking to me, I think about werewolves or Bigfoot or something, they recognized me and was just like, oh my goodness, I have to tell this guy the story about Bigfoot. And I was just like, hey, you, you seem to know me from social media. I have no idea who you are, but here is a spooky Appalachia business card. Seriously, go check out the spooky Appalachia boys. Um, but yeah, I mean, how many places can you go to an event, a festival and just take a nap and just no one disturbs you, no one bothers you, like that's just what you can do. So rule number five, if you ever find yourself in Havasia for Foshnot or any of their other festivals or events, or you just find yourself visiting the little village one day, take time to enjoy the small things. Take time to just live in the moment 
and enjoy this one of a kind location, kind of the, the world and time kind of forgot about. It's such a surreal experience and it's something that everyone should appreciate at some point in their life. If you take the time to really take it all in between the people, the food, the dancing, the bonfire, and you can truly start to begin to understand why West Virginia is referred to as almost heaven. All right, well, enough with the sappiness uh, for one video. If you like this video, you'll probably also like the video I did on surviving the Mothman Festival 2022. But until next time, don't forget to stay wild, stay wonderful, and I'll talk to you later.